You are still watching Ways Now. Today is World Chinasa Ken Ugu Day. So happy birthday, Chinasa Ken Ugu. Our one and only um, social conscience uh, with NASA Queen. <laughs> uh, I mean, when I saw this picture, I said, this is Chinasa that we know. And I'm so happy for her today. She adds a year. She's, um, for those that do not know Chinasa, she, she was a co-anchor on Waze. Well, she's still a co-anchor on Waze. We're just, we're just uh, giving her a break for a while while she pursues other things. And um, so we say happy birthday again to her. If you've checked social media today, you must have seen all these pictures flooding your, your timeline. Such a pretty, pretty queen. Yeah. So happy birthday, Nasser, again. All right, Tammy, um, let me come to you first. What did you find for us in the news today? Recently placed 100 COVID-19 protocol defaulters on an international travel restriction. Hmm. So the news is that the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 has released a list of the second batch of international travelers who defaulted by failing to undergo the mandatory seven days post-arrival COVID-19 PCR test. This hmm. is the second, the first I think came up last month. And so the federal government has, you know, these people who defaulted wouldn't go through the necessary seven day COVID-19 PCR test. Have been placed on a band so that they cannot make um, trips on international flights for the next six months. Mm -hmm. That's the order by the federal government. And what they did was to publish not their names to avoid name shaming and all that. They just published their international passport numbers, and so they will be prohibited for traveling, you know, from traveling out of the country for the next six months. All right. Uh that's interesting. So maybe I'll just take my story before I come to Lamy because my story is also in line with um, COVID. Also, the headline says, Car COVID Boa um, clash over COVID-19 vaccines. I mean, if you've been following um, the social media, it's been going crazy over this um, clash. Interestingly, I watched um, Rotu Sodiri's um, show on another sister uh, television station where he was interviewing the... I think the coordinator of the car COVID and she talked about, you know, she tried to clarify this, you know, but it's just important for people to understand what's happening because right now, um, according to Punch, it says the private sector led coalition against COVID-19 has rejected claim by one of its members, that's Boa Group, that it purchased 1 million doses of COVID-19 vaccine for Nigeria. Boa on Monday announced that it secured 1 million doses of um, AstraZeneca, rather. Um, COVID-19 vaccines through Afri, Afri, AfriZim Bank. Now, um, so in partnership with COVID. So I, I loved her explanation because, um, first of all, when I listened to her explanation, the coordinator for COVID, she was saying that, first of all, a million vaccine is unrealistic for you to ship in a million vaccine into the country because for you to be able to bring in that number of vaccines, so many things has to be in place, the, ref the um, um, preservation, you know, everybody has to, all hands, NAVDAC, everybody has to be involved, the administration, everybody has to be involved. So it is impossible. Yes, they have secured, you know, the um, vaccines, but it is in batches that it will eventually come. That's number one. And when they asked her about payments, you know, she said, of course, there's a fund that um, Kakovid has with the Central Bank of Nigeria. So Kakovid will pay that fund. So while Boa Group is coming out to say that they are the ones financing a million vaccine is what I don't know. So whatever it is, they should just calm down <laughs> and do the right thing. So that's my story for today. Um, Olami are you there now? So let me have your story. Can I, can I, can I just um, chip in? Go ahead, please. Why, why would Boa do that? Is it kind of a? I said, why would Boa? Why would they um, give us misinformation? I, I want to tell me that um, misinformation. Why, what, what would be their objective? Really, I, I really don't true. know what the, the objective would be. What do you think? Boa? Honestly, I really don't know what their objective would be. Yeah. Really? What, 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 I, I have no idea what. Anyway, to go into my news. Go ahead. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. Um, my news is about the Kankara boys. The Kankara boys. Yes. Um, it's unfortunate that um, a caretaker um 
which is the equivalent of the local government chairman, has been remanded in the correctional facility in Castillo State mm -hmm. regarding regarding the um, the kidnap, the abduction of the boys. So it's a bit startling that uh, um, people who are placed in position of authority will actually come around to sabotage the, the especially young children, mm -hmm. using them, you know, especially children in education. It's it's a, it's a bit um, appalling that this has happened in Nigeria. Why, why, what would be the aim? Why would you want to sabotage children's education on their own personal interest? It's very saddening. You know, I mean, interestingly, this this Kankara boys um, abduction, right? Um, if you remember clearly, that was when we just came back from that one week break where they had to air the Shiloh program. And the guest we had, you know, off camera was saying something about, you know, don't just watch. Before you know anything, they would demand for a ransom and everything. You know, I mean, if you look at the abduction, you know, you would know that it was really, really staged. You know, the president was going to be in Casina at that time. You know, so many things was, was going to, um, they, they, they were going to, that, that was going to transpire at that time. So it was, it, 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 it's only natural for us to be hearing things like this. That they are beginning to, you know, arrest certain kinds of people that played a key role in that abduction. So I'm happy about the news, and I'm hoping that they get, they make more arrests. Because you see, when a crime of that, yes, when a crime of that magnitude happens and happens successfully, you cannot tell me that it was just the what was it called, the bandits or the criminals that were involved. No, I am very certain that even law enforcement Ooh. agencies, everybody. They will, if they trace it well, they will find everybody that, you know, participated in that abduction. And that is the kind of story we want to be hearing that they are I, I, arresting those people. My, my question at that time was, how were the boys ferried? Yeah. You know, they were in numbers. They were 300 and something. How? How were they ferried? You just see 300 question. and something people moving, time? moving, uh, you know. Uh, and they said they, 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 they moved on foot, you know. So it is not... It 300, is, do you know what 300 and something boys would look like uh -uh. on foot? Hey, that's a crowd. <laughs> that's a crowd. So I'm excited about the news. I hope that he's able to, you know, confess and make, I mean, stay, say more people that were involved in the situation, hopefully. <laughs> Lavi, why are you smiling sheepishly? <laughs> <laughs> we hope that this will not be the last time we'll hear about it. You know... The way the justice system is in Nigeria is really, really compromised. And um, we hope we'll see the end of this. I hope so. And too. it won't go the way of the others. You know, you thank God you mentioned justice system. Because when I'm always talking, you lawyers will now come and be telling me, but it's still good to go through <laughs> it. Um, but tell me, do you have anything to add to this or we just move on? Uh, well, I read his story too, and it's, it's quite a sad story that somebody who was supposed to be negotiating for them, someone who had such privileged position was the one who was, you know, having a phone call with the perpetrators, the kidnappers. It's, it's really a sad story. And like you, I'm also hoping that we get justice for all of them and that, you know, this sort of deters people from perpetrating such acts. We should make more arrests. This is just one. <laughs> we need to make more arrests. <laughs> All right, so that's, uh, that's what we can take on what's in the news. So um, when we come back from the break, the hashtag um, Occupy Lekki Tollgate, hashtag Defend Lagos, and hashtag the No Burn Your Papa Way. That's our conversation for tonight. We want to understand what is going on. And if possible, uh, we want to hear from you also. You know, So we're going to be opening our phone lines to hear from you what your thoughts are concerning this fresh um, what's it called? Fresh um, conversations around another protest. Stay with us. We'll be right back.